So the new Insta360X4 is here and it offers resolution up to 8K. So just how big are the files that it generates and will your current memory card be big enough and fast enough to handle it? Well, stick around and let's try to find out. So you have your brand new Insta360 X4 and of course you're going to want to record in 8K resolution or possibly 5.7K at 60 frames per second and the question is what memory card are you going to need in order to do that? Well that's what we want to cover in today's video. We're going to look at some of the specifications you need to be looking for, we're going to discuss brands and where to buy your memory cards. And I'll also share some test results with you from some of the most popular memory cards out there to see which one performs the best or if there's any difference at all between them. Now there is a lot to cover here so I'm going to place the chapters up here and I'll also make those available on the video timeline. But before we get started, one important note, this video is not paid for or sponsored in any way. I purchased the X4 and all of the memory cards with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. And of course, if you're enjoying the video, getting good information out of it, please remember to give us a like, and also subscribe to the channel for a lot more content on Insta360 and other cameras. So first up, let's talk about what specification of card you're going to need in order to make use of the high resolution and high speed modes of the new Insta360 X4. Now, if you look at a typical memory card these days, you'll find it is just plastered with symbols and numbers and all kinds of specifications, and it can get pretty overwhelming. Now, the good news is that like most video cameras, the key specification that you're interested in for your X4 is the video speed or V number. Now currently there are just five categories of video speed. There's V6, V10, V30, V60, and V90. Now this number indicates the minimum sequential write speed that the card is guaranteed to maintain. And it's stated in megabytes per second. So if you have a memory card with a V10 rating, that card is guaranteed to provide a sequential write speed of never less than 10 megabytes per second. So what speed do you need then for your Insta360 X4? Well, in order to determine that, you need to know the camera's bitrate. Now, the bitrate is the amount of data generated for each second of video that is recorded. Now, in the case of the X4, the maximum bitrate, that would be when you're recording 8K 30 frames per second or 5.7K at 60 frames per second, is 200 megabits per second. Now, an important note here, the bitrate is stated in megabits per second with a small b, as opposed to the video speed, the V number that we talked about just a moment ago, which is stated in megabytes per second. Luckily, the conversion is pretty straightforward. If you remember back to basic computer classes, you'll recall that one byte is equal to eight bits. So converting from one to the other is simply a case of either multiplying or dividing by eight. And if we do the calculation for the X4, 200 megabits per second is equal to 25 megabytes per second. So clearly for the X4, a V10 card is not going to be sufficient. So for your X4 then, you're going to need a card of at least the next level, which is a V30 card. Now, 25 megabytes seems pretty close to 30 megabytes per second. So in the testing we do later, we'll find out if a V30 card is in fact fast enough for 8K resolution or 5.7 60 frames per second on an X4. 
Another specification that you might want to look for in a memory card is the read speed. Now basically this is how fast you're going to be able to get the data that's on the card onto your computer or whatever device you are using. Now, just like the write speed, the read speed is also measured in megabytes per second. Now, typically read speeds are a little bit higher than the write speed. And for the type of cards we've been discussing, V30 cards, you'll probably find most of them are in the 100 to almost 200 megabyte per second range. And of course, this can make a big difference in the amount of time you have to wait to transfer your files particularly if you've been recording a lot of video. Now, there is an important point here, and that is, in order to take full advantage of the read speed of your memory card, you need to use a memory card reader which can support at least that speed. Now, one of the upgrades on the X4 compared to the old X3 is a faster USB port, now USB 3.0, which promises much faster read speeds than the previous model. And that's something we'll test for later on as well. So what card capacity are you going to need for your new X4? And of course, that's going to depend on what resolutions and frame rates that you're filming at. Let's start out with the most extreme case, and that would be filming at 8K 30 frames per second or 5.7K 60 frames per second. In those modes, the X4 is recording at 200 megabits per second, which, if we do the conversion, works out to around 1.5 gigabytes per minute of video recorded. Now, in my testing, it worked out to be closer to 1.6 gigabytes. So if you used those settings, a 64 gigabyte card would give you around 40 minutes of recording time, a 128 gig card would give you around 80 minutes of recording time, and so on. Although, do keep in mind that once a card is formatted, the available space on the card is a little bit less than what's written on the label. Now, if you're recording at 5.7K 30 frames per second, the bitrate drops to around 100 megabits per second, so obviously you're going to get about double the amount of recording time. Also worth mentioning, there is a 5.7K plus mode, which records 5.7K 30 frames per second at a higher bitrate of somewhere between 130 and 140 megabits per second. So obviously your total recording time, if you're using that mode, is going to be somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm not here to advocate for any particular brand of memory card, but when it comes to memory cards, this is one product you don't want to go cheap on. I highly recommend you go with a known and established memory card brand. These products are the result of extensive research, they are produced in optimized manufacturing environments, and these companies have stringent and externally accredited quality assurance system to give you a product that you can rely on. If you think of the consequences of going with some cheap off-brand, you could easily end up losing your entire vacation videos or your YouTube project videos, whatever the case may be. It's just not worth the risk. Of course, you can experience problems even with some of these known brands, but the probability is going to be much lower. And also, it's important where you buy your memory cards. There is a significant knockoff market for memory cards, and if you find a deal on eBay or Amazon Marketplace for a popular memory card which seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. And that brings us to the brands that we're going to be looking at today. Now, I realize there are other brands out there that I might not have included here, but this is just a collection of five brands that are the most familiar to me. All of the cards are 256 gigabyte cards, with one exception that I will mention, and of course they are all V30 rated cards. So in alphabetical order, here's the list of cards that we're going to be testing. 
Firstly, the Kingston Canvas Go Plus. Read speed of 170 megabytes per second, write speed 90 megabytes per second, and a current street price of around $26. Next up, the Lexar 1066X Silver Series card. Now, this has been my go-to card for the last few years, so it will be very interesting to see how it stacks up against the others in the list. The read speed of this card is 160, write speed 120, and the current street price is $23. Next up, something of a budget choice, the PNY Pro Elite. Read speed 100, write speed 90, and current street price just $20, so this is the least expensive of the bunch. Next up, the Samsung Pro Plus. Now this one is a 512 gigabyte card, but I can assure you the read and write specifications are identical to the 256 version at 180 read and 130 write. The 256 gig version comes in at a street price of $25. And finally, the most expensive of the group, the SanDisk Extreme, with a read speed of 190 and a write speed of 130, and a current street price of $27. So testing was split into two parts, a write test, recording in different modes on the X4, and then a read test transferring the files from the card to my computer. As far as the write test is concerned, I did multiple recording runs with all of the cards, typically a 10 minute duration, and I tested of course the 8K 30 frames per second and the 5.7K 60 frames per second, but I also just did some runs at 5.7K 30 and the 5.7K plus enhanced mode just to see what the results looked like. Now, the results for all five cards is pretty straightforward. They all passed flawlessly. There were no issues at all with running any of the cards in any of the modes. All five cards generated files of identical size, which implies that they were all running at exactly the same bitrate. Here, as you can see, I was able to confirm that the 8K mode and the 5.7K60 mode were generating 200 megabits per second. The standard 5.7K30 mode, about 100 megabits per second. And the enhanced 5.7K plus mode, between 130 and 140 megabits per second. Now you'll notice that all of the calculated bit rates are a little higher than the specifications, but I think that's more due to a change in the file organization with the X4. On the X3 and older models, every time you recorded a video, you got two separate files, one for each lens. With the X4, you now get just one single file, so I think possibly there may be additional information embedded into the file. And finally, let's take a look at the read speed results. So first off, I would say that all manufacturers came in below their advertised read speeds, with the Kingston being considerably below its claimed read speed. And in the case of the SanDisk, I should point out that this is probably more a limitation of my card reader than of the card itself. But even with that limitation, you can see that the SanDisk came out on top with 168 megabytes per second, and the PNY not surprisingly being the slowest at 93. Now, all of these transfer speeds were achieved by removing the card from the camera and placing it into a high-speed card reader. I use this particular one from Lexar. If you typically like to just plug your camera in and transfer the files directly over that way, you need to know that you're going to be limited to 80 megabytes per second, regardless of how fast the card is.
Now this is a big improvement over the X3, which was limited to 30 megabytes per second, but it's still about half the speed that you'll get with one of the faster cards. So when it comes to the in-camera performance, we basically saw no difference whatsoever between the five different memory cards. All of them performed flawlessly in all modes, up to and including 8K at 30 frames per second or 5.7K at 60 frames per second, and they were able to handle the write speed of 200 megabits per second with no difficulty at all. The only real difference that we saw between the cards is in terms of their read performance, with the SanDisk being the fastest and the budget choice PNY not surprisingly being the slowest, but do keep in mind that those speeds are only possible if you're using a card reader which will support those speeds. If you're transferring directly from your X4, there really is no difference again between the cards. So that about wraps it up for today. If you have any questions, any comments, or you wish to share your experience, please go ahead and place those into the comments section. Also, if you enjoyed the video, remember to give us a like, and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more content on Insta360 and other cameras. Thank you for watching.